Peugeot's second generation, 2008, is a small SUV that offers an arguably more sophisticated take on the kind of little urban crossover style design popularised by cars like Nissan's Duke. Super mini based, it offers all the advantages of that compact runabout you were thinking of, together with the kind of added space, style and light off-road drivability you probably never expected to be able to enjoy on a small car budget. This revised version of the Mark II model gets a smarter look and a new full hybrid engine option. There's a bigger battery option for the all-electric version too. Despite its beefy looks, the 2008 is still front-wheel drive only. Engine-wise, there are three very different powertrains to choose from. If you know the Peugeot brand, you might not be too surprised to hear that the available petrol unit is the usual 1.2-litre three-cylinder PureTech power plant, in this case developing either 100 or 130 horsepower with a choice of six-speed manual or eight-speed automatic transmission. This PureTech 130 E88 auto model returns up to 48.9 miles to the gallon and up to 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. There's a stronger dose of combustion-based electrification further up the range with the introduction of a full hybrid version, the Hybrid 136 E DSC6, which combines PureTech petrol power with an electric motor to produce a total output of 136 horsepower and features a battery that's able to recharge at low speeds around town. Peugeot reckons that this powertrain can operate more than 50% of the time in electric mode in urban conditions. It's a power plant that replaces the previous 1.5 litre blue HDI diesel unit and manages up to 62.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and up to 102 grams per kilometre of CO2. As for the all-electric E2008 version, well, most versions of that model continue with the same drivetrain as before, with a 136 horsepower electric motor driving the front wheels through a single-speed transmission and energised by a 50 kilowatt hour battery with a 214 mile range. If you can stretch to the very top of the lineup, though, Peugeot will now also offer you a longer range variant with a Gutsia 156 horsepower motor mated to a larger 54 kilowatt hour battery that claims to be able to take you up to 251 miles between charges. With either variant, AC recharging takes seven and a half hours from a seven kilowatt garage wall box, or 30 minutes to DC charge at 100 kilowatts from 15 to 80%. This second generation 2008 visually delivered what its Mark I predecessor lacked, a real sense of stylistic identity. Original designer Gilles Vidal evolved the shape of this second generation 208 Super Mini into that of a bold, robust and confident SUV. If you want this car, it'll be because you think it really stands out and you'll be right. This improved version gets a few subtle visual tweaks and still has just as much pavement presence. The main changes with this updated design are all here at the front, which above base trim gains this smart body coloured cascading style grille, this restyled grey lower intake and perhaps most notably these overt corner cutouts with their three daytime running light slashes. In short, you'll be noticed in the gym car park. Right, time to take a look inside. It certainly has a very futuristic feel and one of very high perceived quality thanks to this two-tier fascia layout with its smart carbon trimmed concave inner section that curls around the edge of the cabin and on into the doors. Predictably, you sit a fraction higher than you would in a 208 not always a given in the design of small SUVs these days. And as with the original 2008 model, the cabin champions Peugeot's unique so-called I-cockpit format, where you view the now revised instrument binnacle over the upper rim of a tiny steering wheel, rather than conventionally through the wheel spokes. On this top GT variant, the concept's been further developed with the addition of this 3D instrument binnacle display. Now this sees critical information like speed and navigational instructions projected in hologram form from the inner roof of the binnacle onto a piece of slanted perspex in the foreground. Other secondary stuff features on a screen set further back and a button on the left of the steering wheel allows you to differently format the whole setup according to preference. 
More media technology sits to your left in the form of the usual center dash touchscreen, which is now standardized at 10 inches in size across the range. This monitor includes plenty of functions, too many in fact, because you have to use this display to operate all the key climate functions, which means switching out of whatever you're looking at every time you want to change temperature or fan speed. At least these seven stylized piano keys below this monitor look rather nice, positioned in front of a row of touch sensitive shortcut buttons just behind. The seats are reasonably comfortable, there's not much wrong with the general ergonomics, there's a reasonable amount of cabin storage space and there are plenty of media connectivity points. Take your pew on this rear seat and you'll find that it's a lot less pokey than is the case with the 208, not only due to this SUV's extra roof height, but also because legroom is ample by class standards, helped by a 65 mm wheelbase length increase over that equivalent super mini model. Not so good is the relative narrowness of the cabin, which would mean that a trio of adults back here would need to be on very friendly terms indeed but then how often would you really cram five adults into a car of this size? Finally, let's take a look in the boot, which is 434 litres in size. That's 123 litres larger than the trunk that you'd get in a 208. This is a capacity figure that remains about average by class standards. Once the seats are folded, there's 1,467 litres of capacity when you load to the roof. This improved version of Peugeot's second generation 2008 continues to make an overt style statement, but it's kept the sensible attributes that endeared its predecessor to plenty of buyers. As with most models of this kind, on paper, the advantages being offered over a standard Super Mini in space, styling and potential driving flexibility appear at first glance to be small. In practice though, they add up to a car that feels a far more rounded, more complete family tool. Not as a primary runabout perhaps, but a perfect second family vehicle.